In this hypothetical scenario, on the 8th of August 2008, the United States stands shoulder to shoulder with the Georgian Armed Forces. It is decided that the United States Air Force will conduct a series of strikes against Russian command posts, C2 nodes and communication relays. In order to do so, they must first suppress and defeat a formidable Russian integrated air defense system network stretching all the way from the Kerch Strait down to the Nguri River in Apazia, consisting of multiple SA-6, SA-10, SA-11, SA-15 and SA-19 batteries. The Russians are on high alert. On the other side of the Caucasus Mountains, multiple SQ-27 and MiG-31 flights are in their assigned orbits on combat air control. At 0400 hours, along with the air offensive, the United States Navy warships stationed off the coast of Georgia begin to unleash a barrage of Tomahawk cruise missiles against tactical targets on the Russian-controlled coastline and deeper within the Russian-controlled territory. Just a minute later, protected by multiple fighters up ahead, two United States Air Force B-52 bombers unleash 40 AGM-86 cruise missiles. Their targets, ports infrastructure, early warning radars and other tactical targets. Ahead of the B-52 bombers, United States Navy, which is also participating in the air campaign, uses its F-18C Hornet jets to launch tactical air launch decoys to help saturate the Russian air defense system and improve the chances of the AGM-86 cruise missiles hitting their targets. For the south, two more F-18s launch multiple tactical air launch decoys ahead of the Tomahawk cruise missiles. Their timing must be impeccable. The slower TALs must reach the target at roughly the same time as the cruise missiles. Russian commanders, having realized that an armada of US aircraft has gathered over the Black Sea, have ordered the cruiser Moskva to fire its P-500 Bazalt supersonic cruise missiles against the United States Navy warships stationed off the Georgian coast. Just moments earlier, two M270 MLRS systems in Georgia launched 10 Atakams ballistic missiles onto the SA-10 in order to try and divert its attention from the incoming barrage of Tomahawk cruise missiles. Although most Atakams missiles get intercepted by the SA-10 system, one manages to score a direct hit. The tactical air launch decoys, followed by the Tomahawk cruise missiles, are now approaching the SA-10 kill zones. To the north, a swarm of 15 P-500 supersonic cruise missiles launched from the cruiser Moskva are making their way underneath the B-52 bombers which are now egressing the AO. The cruise missiles are heading towards the US Navy vessels now within only 15 nautical miles. The Tomahawk cruise missiles, now sandwiched between two groups of tactical air launch decoys, are making their final approach onto the SA-10 site. The SA-10 has earlier expelled almost all of its ammo in an attempt to repel the attack with the attack ups. It's also been damaged. It now relies on a pair of SA-15s, an SA-19 and an SA-6 site to repel the attack. The SA-15 fires and shoots down some of the Tomahawk cruise missiles, but some of the Tomahawks get through and start hitting the SA-10. The search radar and the tracking radar get hit and the SA-10 is knocked out of action. Further north, another SA-10 battery unleashes its powerful rockets, except it's confused the tactical air launch decoys for cruise missiles. Thankfully for the Americans, the AGM-86 cruise missiles launched by the B-52s earlier on are unharmed and continue towards the SA-10 site and other targets. As the barrage of P-500 cruise missiles approaches the US Naval Group, the RIM-66 onboard surface to air missile defense systems activate and the SM-2 missiles begin to intercept the P-500s one by one. Soon after, all P-500s are shot down and none reach their target. Disgruntled and unhappy about the performance of their P-500 cruise missiles, the Russians used the battlecruiser Pyotr Veliki to launch a barrage of P-700 anti-ship supersonic cruise missiles in an attempt to finally defeat the formidable US Navy air defense system. Now that one SA-10 is down and the other one is out of ammo, wild weasel flights, F-16s armed with powerful anti-radiation missiles, begin to push ahead of the strike packages to clear the airspace of the remaining surface-to-air missile defense systems. They fire dozens of AGM-88 HAR missiles, hoping under their targets, the search radars, the track radars, emitting radio energy, allowing the harms to home in on their location. Overhead, another salvo of attackums. The attackums hit an early warning radar and knock out an SA-6 battery. In the meantime, the Russian air defense system is overwhelmed by the amount of HAR missiles heading towards their way, and although some get shot down, 
some inevitably get through to their targets. The Russian air defense system is completely overwhelmed by the amount of firepower that the Americans have thrown at them, and now dozens of AGM-86 cruise missiles, earlier launched by B-52 bombers, impact the SA-10 site, whilst overhead, AGM-88 harm missiles hit targets such as the SA-15 scattered around the area. Further south, a fighter sweep consisting of 12 F-15C Eagles approaches the Russian border. On the right flank, the F-15s get engaged first by the Su-27s. Unfortunately for the Americans, after the initial salvo, only one F-15 remains. On the left flank, the Americans have more success. After downing two Su-27s, they only lose one of their own. But unfortunately for the Americans, the Russians have significantly more aircraft. On the right flank, a four-ship of F-15s arrives to help and launches a barrage of AIM-120C AMRAAM missiles. But unfortunately, it is not enough. Eventually, all F-15s get shot down. There is now significant gaps in the air defense system along the coastline. Eight F-15C Eagles push in with a fighter sweep clearing the airspace ahead of the strike packages. They encounter a four-ship of MiG-29s and launch a salvo of AMRAMs. Unfortunately, the MiGs are outgunned and outnumbered. They stand no chance of survival. All MiG-29s are shot down. Whilst the strike packages consisting of F-15E strike eagles hit their targets along the coastline, some F-15Cs commit further south to engage Su-27s and MiG-31s, the earlier one in the air engagement against 12 American F-15s. In the meantime, three Russian Su-27s manage to make it through to central Georgia. They shoot down the American E-3 AWACS aircraft and engage with the last combat air patrol of four F-15Cs that were there as the last backup. After a few minutes of combat, all three Su-27s are shot down. The Americans take two casualties and two F-15Cs remain. Further north, two brave MiG-29s sneak up on a four-ship of F-15s, but even with the element of surprise, their fate is sealed. The MiGs are no match for the Mighty Eagle and the AIM-120 AMRAAM. But the Americans have another problem. A swarm of P-700 cruise missiles is about to hit their vessels. In a desperate attempt, some F-15s engage the P-700s with their AIM-120 AMRAAMs. Once again, the mighty RIM-66 air defense system aboard the US Navy vessels opens up and starts shooting down the P-700s one by one. One F-15C pilot wanting to bolster his aerial kills for the day starts to engage the P-700s with the remainder of his AIM-120C AMRAAMs. As the American ships shoot down the rest of the P-700 cruise missiles, F-15E strike packages, although having taken some losses from the remainder of the Russian air defense systems, manage to strike their targets along the coastline and begin to egress the AO, almost half an hour since the beginning of the operation. All Blue Force strike packages and aircraft begin to egress and return to their bases in Turkey. Although both sides have taken significant casualties today, the United States Air Force has poked a significant hole through the Russian Air Defense Network system, laying ground for further strikes. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Adios.